Hey everyone. So in the last video, we looked at just a brief introduction into ratios and how to start thinking about writing these down. Now in this video, we're going to keep going on the idea of writing ratios, applying this to a question. And we're also going to look at what we mean by equivalent ratios. So let's just jump straight into a question here. I have for question one, a bag contains three red, five blue and two green balls. And we want to write down the ratio of red to blue to green, as well as red to the total number of balls in the bag. So all we have to do here is the early stages of ratios. It's really just an act of counting and writing this stuff as a ratio. So we have red balls here and we're told in the question, we have three of those. So to start writing this down as a ratio, we're looking at the order of red to blue to green. So we're going to write down the amount of red ones we have. So we have three. And if you remember from the last video, this two, we can write as this thing here. So remember, when we write ratios, we're shortening these big sentences. We're writing a nice and compact expression for these bits of information. Okay, cool. So next we are looking at the green, oh, sorry, blue balls. We have five of them here. So I'm going to write that here. And once again, we're looking at that. We're looking at red, two blue, two green. So I'm going to write our symbol here again. And finally, we want to look at the green ones here. So that I can find as the number two from the question. So that two is going to go here. So as you can see, it's just a counting act to start off with. And the order matters. So we're looking at red to blue to green. So we have to make sure these numbers are in the right order. That's why I've color coordinated them here. And also ratios, we can look at more than two bits of information, right? We defined in the last video that a ratio tells us um, how much of one thing there is in relation to another thing. But we can do this for multiple things. Here we've looked at how much red there is in relation to blue and to green as well. So we've written out our three bits of information as a nice compact ratio down here. So that's all for the first part of this question. Now, for the next bit, we want to find the ratio of the red ones to the total. So how many we have in total. Now, once again, the red ones, we had three of those. And the total is just how many balls we have all up. So I have three, three red, five blue, two green. So if I add all of these up, I'm going to get 10 in total. So the ratio of red to the total is going to be three, two, and remember this, whoops. Remember this two is this symbol here. So we have a ratio of three to 10. Now, that's how we can think about writing these ratios. There's not too much to it, but for the second part, when we start talking about equivalent ratios, it's gonna get a little bit trickier and we're gonna start consulting some of the knowledge we learned from fractions. So now we're going to look at equivalent ratios. And in the previous video, you may have remembered, we looked at this idea of cordial. And I was saying, well, to make a full big thing of cordial, like a big jug, I had three glasses of water for each one glass of cordial. And we said that, okay, if we were to make one kind of jug of this, then to 
make this cordial, I would have, let's do this color. I would have three glasses of water and I had one glass of cordial as well down here. And that I used to make this big jug on the right here. And now, what if, for example, I wanted to make a bigger jug, maybe a jug that was two times the size of this, or maybe just two lots of the one jug I have here. Let's say I wanted to make something twice as big as this. Well, for one thing, I'm going to need now, let me just write example two. So, jug twice as big. Well, I'm going to need to increase both of my ingredients here. And if I want to make one twice as big, well, I'm going to need two lots of my cordial. So, instead of one glass of cordial, I'm going to need two glasses of cordial. So to make something two times as big, I'm going to need instead of one glass of cordial, cordial, I need two. Okay, sweet. So I have two glasses of cordial, but now for each one glass that I have, I need three, for each one glass that I have of cordial, I need three glasses of water. So for two glasses of cordial, I'm going to need, let's find it out. So my ratio before was three to one. And this was the first jug. And to get to my jug twice as big as this, I had to, well, I had to use twice the amount of ingredients. So my cordial, instead of using one glass, I needed to take two lots of this. So I'm going to need two glasses of cordial. And how many glasses then of water are we going to need? Well, I need two lots of the three that I already have. So you can see this is starting to work in the same way as equations. You can see a little bit of a crossover here in the sense that what we did to one side, we did to the other side of our ratio. Well, we, when we increased one ingredient by two, we had to increase the next ingredient by two. So our new ratio is six to two. This is what we call an equivalent ratio. So we have produced an equivalent ratio of a jug twice as big as the original one. Now, this idea comes from, we've, we've seen a similar idea of this in fractions, for example. So think back to equivalent fractions. We said that, okay, um, the fraction of a half is like saying if I had, for example, two coins, let's do these in another color. If I had, say, two coins, half of these two is just going to be one out of the two. So I'm pulling out one out of the two. Now, if I had, for example, four coins, so one, two, three, four, well, if I wanted to get 
half of this, well, I'm going to pull out two out of the four. Outs. Whoops. I'm going to pull out two out of the four. And I can write this as two out of four, but that can simplify it to half because I can do something to the top and the bottom, to something to the numerator and the denominator to make this thing into this thing. Now, the same idea goes for equivalent ratios. This idea that two quarters is the same way as just writing one half. We can see a similar thing happening here. A ratio of three glasses of water to one glass of cordial is the same as six glasses of water for every two glasses of cordial because the ratio is preserved because the same number is being multiplied to both parts of my ratio. Now let's apply this to a couple of questions. So here we'll do two more questions. So we'll do question three. Now I have a ratio of four to nine and that is gonna be the same as writing 16 to something else, something that's unknown. Now let's start to think about how we'd approach this question. Now I have a ratio of four to nine and I want an equivalent fraction to that. So I want something to have been done to both of these numbers, both my four and my nine to get to an equivalent fraction. That's how we can define that. That's what we talked about when we looked at equivalent fractions. Now we want an equivalent ratio here. So I already have one of these numbers here, one of the numbers here, 16. And I'm trying to figure out this mystery number next to the 16. Now, in doing this, I want to see what was done to get from 4 to 16. Was something, what was multiplied or divided? Uh, what, what, did, what was 4, sorry, multiplied or divided by to get to 16? And we can see that here it was multiplied by 4 to get to 16. And what we do to one side of the ratio, we're going to do to the other side as well. So to find the equivalent ratio, I'm going to multiply 9 by 4. And that's going to give me a ratio of 16 to 36. It's the same thing as equivalent fractions, guys. We looked here before at, well, what can you do to the numerator and the denominator to get to one half? And we divided top and bottom by two. And or we can multiply top and bottom by something else to get me a bigger equivalent fraction. For example, to get from one half to two quarters, I can multiply my numerator and denominator by two. We're doing the same thing with ratios here. Now let's look at one final example. Example four. And I have a ratio of 30 to 15. And I want to find what the equivalent ratio is going to be if this number here was five. So there's going to be some relationship between this thing here and this thing here. Now let's take a closer look at that. So I have my ratio of 30 to 15 and I want to see what was done to both of these to get me from 15 to five, to get me an equivalent ratio 
he. Well, we need to think of how do I get from 15 to five? What can I multiply or divide 15 by to get me to five? Well, I can divide, if you remember your times tables, I can divide 15 by three to get to five. So I'm going to want to divide my 30 by three as well. And that gives me 10 to five. Now, that's the end of this question, but just a quick thought as well on this particular thing. Can we find an even simpler ratio here? Can we find this ratio in its simplest form? Kind of like how we found fractions to their simplest form. Can we find an even easier ratio here? So can we find another number that goes into both 10 and five to get me a ratio in its simplest form? Well, five goes into both 10 and five. So if I divide both sides by five, well, I'm gonna get on the left-hand side a two, and on the right-hand side, I'm going to get one. So we've reduced a ratio of 30 to 15 all the way down to a ratio of two to one. So I don't know, we can apply this to a real life scenario. So if, for example, my, this one was thinking on the fly here. If this one was, if this two to one was a ratio of, of the money I earn at work to my friend, so ratio of money for me and a friend. So for example, I make $2 for each $1 my friend makes. Well then, if my friend were to make $5, I would make $10. Five to 10. Or if my friend were to make $15, I would make twice that. I would make 30. And this can go on and on. If my friend makes 50, I make 100. Because the ratio tells me that me over here, I'm always going to make two times whatever my friend makes. Our ratio of earning is two to one from me to him. So for every dollar he makes, I'm going to make two. Now, just a random example at the end to give you some more real world applications of ratios because they arise in more places than we would realize. But thank you for joining me on this video and I will see you in the next one.